Right. Hello, everybody. I'm, I'm Otto from the Maribi Foundation, and I'm here to tell you about some basic security issues related to MariaDB. I find it that most of the time when there are security breaches on a massive scale, they most of the time are related to people doing the basics wrong. So now I'm going through the basics, what you should do if you maintain a MariaDB database. And there are a few, few cool things that are new, which you should know about, and mainly socket authentication. I'm also going to touch about the other basic things everybody should do. And, and the nice thing about this is that socket authentication is by default enabled in, in Debian. So if you install a new MariaDB in Debian, you will be using socket authentication directly. You don't need to do anything special. And also, for example, the settings on what connections it listens to are secure by default in Debian. But still, you might want to lax them if, you're in, if you have a setup where you have remote connections. So it's good to know the basics about them. Right. So let's first check how many of you administer MariaDB servers. All right, cool. So you, you know that my MariaDB is a fork from MySQL made by the original authors of MySQL, namely Monty Videnius, who wrote, who started MySQL. And then after Oracle acquired Sun and got MySQL that way, then Monty decided to fork it. So it's now with using the name MariaDB, but it couldn't use the name MySQL because Oracle owns the trademark for it. And the fork happened at the 5.5 versions. So MySQL 5.5 and MariaDB 5.5 are very close to each other. And then for every release, the feature set diverges a little bit, but all the basic things stay the same. And there's a company called MariaDB that pro provides commercial services. And there's also a foundation, and I am from the foundation. And the foundation's task is just to take care of the open source project that it can't be sold or anything har harmful to its success. And, and the foundation runs on donations. And we have many big companies who sponsor the foundation. So you can, we can do what we do. We are seven people. And from the foundation, we have here me and Ian there. And, and Sergey, who had a talk earlier today, he's there. And he's, he's working for the corporation. All right. So if you've ever installed MySQL or MariaDB on Debian, I'm sure you've seen the screen. So when you do apt-get install, it will ask your root password. It, you, ha you need to set it traditionally. Is this familiar to you? Yes. So when you have lots of hosts to maintain, then this becomes a problem because you have a first you have some credentials to the host itself so that you can get through SSH or something else to the host. And then you have a second set of credentials to get into the database. And the more hosts you have, the more and more passwords you have. For SSH, you maybe use SSH keys. So that solves it. You don't need a root password. But for MySQL daemon, you traditionally have a root account and a root password. And you need to manage that password somehow. And then if you have tens or hundreds of thousands of hosts, then you use some kind of automation like Puppet or Ansible or Salt or Chef or whatever. And here's an example from Ansible from a Galera cluster. 
and you actually need to sit, set three different passwords. You need to set one for the cluster root password and you need to set one for the Debian maintainer user and then you need to set one password for the account that is done is used to make backups from the data. So you need to manage three passwords and then you have, have all these configuration files that go on every host and in that configuration file are these passwords and those configuration files are basically protected only by Unix file permissions. So it's a kind of a brittle, brittle thing. And not, not only is the risk of, of leaking the passwords in this kind of situation, you also have the problem that the passwords might get out of sync if you change the password on your system then you need to figure out how to update the configuration everywhere to get the correct password out there. So all of this is, and then of course you have this, all these Ansible scripts or Puppet or whatever, and you have that in some Git repository and you can't have passwords in that Git repository. Maybe, maybe you have, maybe not, but if you don't have, then you have some kind of secrets management that then does some lookups or something into a separate place where the secrets are. So all of this suddenly makes everything quite complex to manage. How many of you use Ansible to deploy MariaDB hosts? How about Puppet, Chef, Salt? All right. So if you go to GitHub and for example Google for MySQL, password, you will notice there's a lot of Ansible and salt and whatever files that people have committed to the version control and then some of them might be real passwords and some, some are not, but anyway there's a risk that you accidentally leak your password when it's part of the configuration and the configuration is managed so in, some rep in, in some repository which maybe it was a secret initially, but somebody accidentally published it or something like that. How, how many of you use Docker? One, all right. So have you, are you familiar with this, this pattern that in Docker you send in as environment variables the password? Yeah, you're weeping. How, how secure is it? For example, it will be visible in the process list on the host and as it is on the common line it will be in the bash history. So of course it means that you need to have access to the host machine but anyway it's just more and more places where the password, password can potentially leak. So there's lots of problems related to password management. You, you need to design systems how to keep the secrets and configuration separately and, and, and ag against leaks. You, need, you are afraid that the password might leak. You should change the password maybe once a year or something like that and so on. So there's a lot of inconvenience related to that. So good news, you don't need to use passwords always. There are other ways you can do the authentication. And also, by the way, even if you don't have the password to the MariaDB server, but if you have root, you have anyway access to it. You can always, you can always go directly to the files and either delete them or copy them somewhere else and then open the data. So actually the password, if you have root on the machine, then the password doesn't actually protect anything. It's only for useful for remote access. So root on a Debian system anyway has access to everything. So the goal is to eliminate the passwords. How many of you have noticed that there's this debian.cnf file which has this maintenance user and its password in clear text? Yes. So, for example, 
if there are some cron jobs or even every time the init script is triggered. This is both for MySQL and MariaDB because of historical reasons. There is an, an, an maintenance account like this so that the init script can do certain things. And there's a place where it can find the password. So not only do we want to get rid of the root password, which you as an administrator yourself set when you install MariaDB, we also want to get rid of this password of this maintenance user account, which is automatic and most people haven't noticed it exists. So the solution is Unix socket authentication. So Unix socket authentication is based on the fact that if you access your MariaDB server, not remotely, but locally, you access it via a Unix socket, which is basically a file, as in Unix everything is a file. And then that file, when you access MariaDB through that file, it will see what username you have. And simply by installing this Unix socket plugin, and then granting that root on localhost can be identified via Unix socket. You can allow that the root can come in without giving a password because the MySQL daemon will see that it was root who is coming in. It will see the Unix username of that user. So here are the commands to install it. But on Debian, you don't need to do this. It's done automatically. So here's an example. If you want to get in, if you're the root user, you just type MySQL. You actually don't need to specify a username and it will immediately let you in. And if you are not root, then yeah, if you are not root, you can still with sudo get into MySQL because when you run sudo, the Unix socket will see that this is done as the root user. But then if you are, yeah, but at other users you can't get in. And also some corner cases that if you have socket authentication enabled and you give a password, it doesn't, it ignores the password completely and lets you in based on, it, on the fact that it notices that you are root already. And it's only for root access, so the root user cannot enter the database as some other user. That's the third example here. Does this look convenient to you? Cool. All right, but there is one drawback that how many of you use PHP MyAdmin? Yeah, so if you have a, if you used to have the system that you install a new server and you set a root user and a password, then you can use tools like PHP MyAdmin to log in, or you can remotely log in anywhere. But after you, you, after you start using this Unix socket authentication, remote connections will not work because it's not actually the root logging in, but it's the PHP process logging in, so MySQL won't let you let the PHP process access the database. So this is the drawback. But this is actually an intended consequence because we want you to have a more secure setup. And the, the solution for this PHP my admin kind of scenario is that you create a separate user with a separate username and password and then you can maybe give it full access to your database or limited access to your database, which is much better. All right, so the Unix socket authentication plugin and, and the root account is installed, activated and installed by default in Debian since Debian 8 and also in recent Ubuntu's. And this is actually something that has been implemented specifically in Debian, and it's not globally by default in all MariaDB. 
installations in other distributions, but we think that we are going to make it default globally, universally for all MariaDB releases at some point. And also note that this applies for new installations. If you already have an existing installation, you already have set a root user password, then we won't clear that out. It will continue to be as it was. So if you have an existing installation and you want to start using socket authentication, then you need to manually do this and the other things that's related to the fact that your old password stops working. All right, yeah, so this was done. The packaging in Debian, which enables this in, in PostScripts and other installation stuff was done by me and Daniel Black. And it's only, only available in Debian at the moment and Ubuntu, but not in Red Hat and SUSE. All right, so this covers the root case and, and root now you have a passwordless root and all your Ansible and salt scripts and everything. You don't need to define any passwords there because Ansible and salt scripts are run as root. So they automatically have access to the MySQL daemon and can do the tricks and things they need to do. Okay, so, and this way every, every time you do something on the, on the local machine as root or using sudo, it will work. But if you need remote access or something else, then you need to learn how to make new accounts. So, and anyway, it's pretty obvious that if everybody are always using the, accessing the database as root, using the root password, then there's something wrong with your security configuration. You should definitely think about creating accounts for individual users or most of the time individual applications because the accounts are used by all kinds of web applications and others. So you, you should create a separate database for every application and a separate user for every application. And here is the syntax how to do it in SQL. And I will post a link to my slides on my Twitter account after this talk so you can check out the syntax there or you can just Google it from the MariaDB knowledge base. And then if you want to want to be have additional security, then you could do multiple users who have access to the same database, but some users have less privileges and you only grant them the privileges that they actually need that kind of protects you against, for example, SQL injections and other stuff that might be in applications despite all other protections. And also note that when you create a user, you, you define a username and a password, but you also define where they are, where the user is coming from. So you can al allow them users that they only come from local host or then you can define some network address. And if you use this present percentile sign, that's a wild card. It means that anybody from this space can access. And if you put only a wild card after the username, then it means that the user can access from anywhere. And then always remember to run flush privileges so that the user data is updated after you made changes to the table. Right. You can also use MySQL admin and other tools to manage these users. The, the point here is that you should not use root to do everything in the database. Create separate databases and, and users for each, each case. All right. In 10.1, there are more additional security features related to this. You can, for example, put policies on the passwords that they need to be of certain length or certain complexity or need to be changed at a certain interval and stuff like that. If you have a, if you're in an enterprise use case, then you might have some security 
policy that dictates something, so you can implement it in MariaDB. And in this example, I'm using the grant command to create the user and grant them permissions in one single go. But there's also a create user command available, so you can do it in separate steps. And, and here's a cool, cool thing which is available in grant and now also in create user in 10.2 onwards that you can put that you require SSL. So in this example, this uh, we create a user that is allowed to, to log to access the database over the network. And then we also we set the password, but we also require that it must come through an SSL connection. So this is additional security. Right. Any questions about this one? All right. Yeah. Then another thing to restrict connections. So there are still plenty despite all firewalls and everything that people should know the basics about administering servers, the internet seems to be full of all kinds of open services all around and people are unfortunately running way too many MySQL and MariaDB servers so that they are listening to connections from anywhere. That's stupid. So what we have in Debian is that we have this bind address to localhost by default. So that solves that problem. And as an administrator, you might want to change this. So there are a few things you can do. There is this option called skip networking. That will turn off whatever is in bind address. It will not bind to any TCP address at all. It will only listen on Unix socket. That's the most secure option you have. But we have this bind address to localhost enabled because that's slightly more compatible in certain situations when there's TCP connections coming from localhost. And if you want the server to accept connections from anywhere, then you can comment out this bind address and then the default will set in, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, so that the da daemon listens on all interfaces and addresses. You can also put here certain rules or you can do that on your, on your firewall, which firewall one might be a better place to restrict certain networks and address spaces. Right, do you have questions about this one? No, this is pretty, pretty basic, but it's just, this is a very basic thing for anybody who's administering servers that you need to do this, but for some reason people seem to forget and neglect even basics, basic, so it's good to discuss this quickly. All right, then the second thing, and this is not enabled by default in Debian, so just like HTTP is an unencrypted connection, if you have remote connections coming in to a MySQL or MariaDB server, they are completely unencrypted. So most of the time those connections are in, inside the data center and in internal networks, so it doesn't matter. But anyway, if you have a cloud environment and maybe virtual servers and you're not quite certain where their traffic are routed and so on, it might be a good idea to enable SSL on these connections and after that they will be encrypted. This is a slightly difficult thing to do because you need to use open SSL command line or some graphical tool like for example TinyCA to create your own certificate authority and then you need to create a key pair for the server and then you need to create a key pair for the client and then you need to sign this with your certificate authority so that they are all trusted with, within your network. So this is not, so this is what you, what it looks like when you have all these keys set up and enabled on your server. 
and this is how it looks like on the client configuration on the remote machine that's connecting to your server. And if you're unsure if the connection is secured or not, you can give this command backslash s and it will show the server status and there's a line about SSL. It will tell you if it's in use or not. And since 10.015, MariaDB has had support for TLS 1.2, which is the only protocol that doesn't have any known vulnerabilities at the moment, so everybody should use it. And you can put in your configuration this SSL cipher line to enforce that TLS 1.2 is always used. Unfortunately, for, for, for uh, licensing reasons, some people think that OpenSSL is not okay to use with MariaDB in Debian, even if it's okay to use with MySQL. So, so we don't in Debian have OpenSSL in use, but we have YASSL, YASSL. The security team might want to review this if this, if this is something that we would be allowed to enable in Debian. Right, do you have questions about securing the connection? Ser Sergey. Say that MySQL packages in Debian then use OpenSSL. Yes, MySQL packages, no, they don't. Well, we need to. It should There's have been the pe same issue. Pe people shaking their head. I think they are using OpenSSL because they have the OpenSSL exception, but the OpenSSL license ex exception hasn't been explicitly given to MariaDB. So some people who are very strict on, 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 interpreting these license things said that we can't use it for MariaDB. Okay, thank but you. Maybe, maybe the security team wants to use a veto here or something like that if it should be fixed in other ways. All right, then to the last part of my security talk. So now you have got rid of the passwords so your management is secure. Then you have the network connections encrypted and you have your daemon that it doesn't listen, listen to connections which are not supposed to happen at, in the first place. Then what remains is encrypting the data at rest. So what you can do, you can for example encrypt the entire hard disk that protects you against if somebody steals the physical hardware. Or you can do some, some things in your application to, to encrypt the data and then only store encrypted data in the database. But that's kind of stupid because then the database doesn't understand what data is inside it. And it can't, for example, give it in correct order or make or do selects on the content or something like that. So the smart thing to do yeah, and, and if you have encrypted the entire hard disk, that doesn't protect you in any way against, against uh, for example, if you have backups that go to some other machine or something like that, then the person administering the database can't be sure if all the backups and all the hard disks everywhere are encrypted. So the optimal thing to do is to have database level encryption. That means that the database sees the data and it can sort it and read the values and do the calculations, everything. But the operating system does not see the data. It's encrypted from the operating system point of view and the files on the disk are encrypted and all, all backups and everything is encrypted. So the database administrator can be rest assured that the data is always encrypted. And this is available in MariaDB since 10.1. 
there's a lots of settings you need to put on to enable it. So we have this shortcut that you can write that include this preset file and then those settings go on. However, that's not enough. You also need to consider key management. Will you have the key in a file? What is the password going to be? And or will you have a separate key server and so on? And, and you need to choose if you want to have maybe logs encrypted or not encrypted. Do you want to leak something in the logs to make it easier to debug? And how about different kinds of things? So it's nice to know this exists. And if you're interested, you'd really need to read up a lot. And you really need to read, read carefully everything because in the worst case, you shut yourself out of the data if you screw up the keys or something like that. And this was contributed by Google. So it's in, in production use, at least at Google. All right, thank you. And I will post the slides on my Twitter account so you can follow me there to get them. Do you have questions? Well, we have a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much. So after this talk, we're going to have a BOF session about MariaDB and MySQL in Debian. So if you're interested, you should hang up, stay, stay around here for that session too. Come on, do you have any questions? <laughs> My presentation can't be so complete that you don't have anything you wonder. Um, so I just installed MariaDB on a new, JC, uh, on a new um, installation. <laughs> and the socket um, authentication functionality isn't there. Do I need to um, enable anything, or how, how do I enable it? Uh, on Jesse, you say. Ten dot zero dot twenty five. I need to double check where it is available. If I get my network working. I don't get my network working now, but it might be that I re remember incorrectly and it's not in Jesse yet. Well, then it will be in Stretch. It, it has at least been in Unstable for for more than a year. So might, I don't remember did it miss, miss last freeze or not. But it's coming. It's in Unstable and testing for over a year and it's been in Ubuntu for a long time because Ubuntu um, a question about uh, connecting as uh, with SSL to uh, MariaDB, but well, I guess my question is also to uh, MySQL. Uh, yeah. Is that around long already? Because I remember that there was a bug with that, but I'm not quite up. So you showed how to enable it now, but has it been around? Uh, how long is that around? Uh, it has been around for a long time. I don't remember exactly. Maybe Sergey knows better how long has SSL been available for MySQL and MariaDB. Okay, so is the question how long SSL was available in MySQL and MariaDB? 
at least since the year 2000. So for a while. Yeah. So uh, actually, what you might remember is that there was a bug that the the client connecting to the server could enf could, could downgrade the protocol so that it doesn't use SSL. So that's why you should use this in your configuration on the client, that it enforces that you that the connection must be SSL, otherwise it will not it will refuse to connect to the server. Right. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Please stay around for the buff session. <laughs>